Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer. And today we're going to talk about ways we lie to ourselves. And we'll go to the positive side of that. The positive side of that is looking for truth and knowing truth and in your innermost self. And all this is for the purpose of love, knowing the highest love, because we have this life. This is your life. If you have this life to live, and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, obviously, with what's going on in the world, we don't, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not afraid. Right now, I'm not afraid at all. I'm saying, if you have this opportunity to know the fullness of love, then why pass it up? Why stay in lower consciousness? Why hold on to things that just bring you down and feed you more lies and keep you a slave in addictions and in um, your, own, your own passions that you've overfed that are leading you to nothing but destruction and other things owning you. You think you own yourself, but... First, I'll, I'll have you look around for a second, or we can look around together. I take a deep breath. I notice that that's anxiety. Some of that's me letting go of my anxiety because it's difficult to go to these places. I notice, you can see in my videos when I take a deep breath, just letting go of all of myself and just dealing with the anxiety that I have to go to these places because it's not easy. It's, it's, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I want the highest of love. So if you, if you understand Christ as a master teacher, whatever else you understand him to be is, you know, he gave us infinite truths that will free us and always bring us closer to love when you look at the deeper esoteric, the inner meaning. It's not some, it's not some weird thing. It's just the inner, the soul of the meaning of what he's talking about, not just the outer meaning. If I say that's a bush and you go, oh, that's just a bush, and then you write it off, or those are flowers on a bush, and then you don't look more. You could probably, we could sit here for a month and, and, be present with that bush and find out so much and so much beauty just in those flowers, you know, and understanding them and um, not just dissecting them and putting them in a microscope, but with Christ's words, he told us, um, seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things shall be added to you as well. And I'm not here to preach, so don't worry about it. But I want to always understand. I always want to understand. As someone said, like in a prophetic way, the other day that, and and of course I was looking about love relationships and stuff because I always want to understand. I always apply it to that. But they said, unless this person lets go of everything else and puts their hundred percent into this, it's not going to happen. You know, this will not. This won't happen. And I was like, yes, okay, <laughs> you know, let me lead by example and do 100% of what I can, you know. Um, but this is what Christ is talking about too, is, and this is what came to me this morning, just on my way up here to this walk, is unless I let go of everything, everything that I see external to me, everything, all, all my relationships, everything, um, Christ talks about this when he's saying he does not hate. It's not hate. It's despise. Um, it's, it's not despise. It's um, to see the value of, to see the value of something as less than, uh, like, 
if I have a bunch of fake plastic pearls. There's something in that. I loved those as a kid. My grandma would buy, <laughs> buy us those and we'd walk around, <laughs> me and my sister, or just me with my grandmother, you know, or I'd have her fake jewelry, you know. But it's like if I have the real thing, then it's not like I hate the plastic pearls, but I see them. They're plastic pearls. It's like Chuck E. Cheese coins, you know, or, you know, chocolate with gold foil on it. Like, yummy, that's good. But it's if I have real gold, that's where I can see the value in the real thing and I let go of what's less than that. And if I'm not willing to let go of that, then I keep trying to sustain myself on gold flaked paint, on tinfoil gold covered chocolate. It tastes good, but it's not paying the bills. It's, um, they're fake plastic pearls. They're fun to play with, but I can't trade them in for anything of value. There's crows. So it's, it's, that's the Greek word there when Christ is saying you must despise these things, see that they're worth less. They're worthless in comparison to what is being offered to us. But what is being offered to us is strange to us because we're, we're used to the familiar and the familiar is our family. I know that what I'm teaching you today can change the whole course of your life. <sighs> because I know that mine is shifting right now as we speak. I cried for an hour this morning during my meditation. And that's a gift. It's the gift of tears. It's not... It wasn't crying like, woe is me, pity, pity. It was crying like I was seeing some deep lies that I was holding on to in, in my inner self. And I was just so sad and so sorrowful, sorrowful and remorseful that I've been lying to myself. And in my own lying to myself, it kept back my work. I don't care about my work. I mean, I care, but you know, I do care because I mean, I care obviously super a lot about each of my clients that I'm with, but I don't care. I didn't care before about building up my work and making more of that because I just trusted that it comes um, when I'm aligned with where I'm meant to be aligned with. So this makes sense, but it affected my work, my relationships, all my relationships, my relationship with my children, my relationship with myself, my relationship with God. Oh, that's the second time this guy's going down this. And I was right behind him when he was coming up. This, oh, I love mountain biking. Anyway, it's these lies, when you don't align with truth in your innermost self, when you don't hold it above all else, um, when you hold, oh, I'd rather get this relationship to work or work this thing out with my parents or whatever. That's what I say. We stay with the familiar. So this is strange because it's unfamiliar. Familiar is family. Okay. If we keep insisting like, no, as soon as I get my parents to love me, as soon as I get this person to love me, as soon as I get my children to respect me, the world to respect me, everyone to, um, to make me famous or rich or whatever else. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, whatever, I'll tell you what my ego was looking after because I saw it clearly today because I, I asked and I'm seeking and, and God knows I'm seeking with all my heart, you know, with all the sincerity that I can have in this moment to know 100% of love because you can act like, I saw this card that's, that showed 10 of cups. 10 of cups represents the fullness of love. You can act like, oh, I have the 10 of cups. I have this card. I have the fullness of love, but acting like it will not give it to you. I acted like it for a long time because I thought that all I could do was act. I thought that that's what I had to do. I thought that this was my, my, um, um, the way to have it was to pretend like I had it. So let me go through this so that you can understand your own patterns. <sighs> And this is not just going in your head. This is going deep. Oh, okay. I'm called to do this. Hold on. Always and forever. I have this Beatles shirt. Oh, let's see where the Beatles. Because a song was coming to me. Of course, I get songs. That's, that's one of my gifts is I hear things. And so the Beatles song that I was getting... 
and that one of my friends on Instagram was actually playing on his guitar, which is wonderful, is, um, I look at you now, see the love there that's sleeping, while my guitar gently... And then it goes something into, and I, I won't go into it all now, but it goes, um, I don't know why nobody told you how to unfold your love. They bought and sold you. Anyway, those are part of the lyrics. If you go, if you, if you listen to that, um, more will come to you. More will come to you. Hold on. Um, all right. There was a mountain biker just sitting there. I didn't, I didn't know if he wanted the teaching this morning or not. Oh, that was at 11.11 when the pause happened. <sighs> All right, so... This is, this is how, this is how I was lying to myself. So you can look in and look with your heart and ask yourself, because it, I told you it won't work with just your mind, but you can, you can ask yourself, why have I been selling out and pretending like scraps are okay and pretending like I'm supposed to live on scraps, like, um, I meant to beg for, for, for more. That's, oh, look, my necklace is showing itself. This one, this one shows an arrow pointing down that we come down here for these experiences. And then an arrow is pointing back up to be enlightened, to, to, to be transformed. The cross is in the middle which is die to whatever we need to die to. Be willing to let go of everything to align yourself with truth and love. If, you, if you're not, you won't get the fullness of this. I don't know if you'll miss everything. It says few go on the narrow path. Few find it. And I don't, I don't at all mean to say, you know, um, you know, you'll go to hell and all this stuff. It's like you'll miss the love that you can have, the abundance that you can have, the joy that's already here, that's available. Christ was showing me. I have that picture of Christ right here in my wallet. And I saw it briefly this morning when I put my timer on to do my hour meditation to sit there with, with him internally in my 5D space with Christ, you know, um, And it was like this love, this love that he has for me. This is who I relate with. You, yeah, I don't know the, the divine that you relate with, but this love is there. And hi. hi. And I was seeing how I was, I'm blocked from that love as long as I keep insisting on trying to squeeze more milk out of an empty cow <laughs> and it's not like someone is empty it's not that it's um as long as I keep thinking there's just scraps there's part of a Narnia book the last battle when these dwarfs are like oh we don't want to be taken in you know and they're in this barn and all they see is what they think is in an old barn that's not used like cow manure and it smells and like mushrooms and fungus and they don't see and then the other people who are in a different consciousness Lucy and Peter and Edmund and um, the others that are there Eustace I think yes um, they see 
they see the real Narnia. They see abundance. They see like, like fruit that is like diamonds growing on trees. And they see all of this beauty and light and like rainbow colors. And, and they get to experience that. But the dwarfs are so stuck in their minds and their tunnel vision. And this is from our childhood. So don't beat yourself up. Just be aware that there are different, the different frequencies and you can shift to a different frequency, a different octave, just like there's different octaves in scales of music. If you don't understand all of what I'm saying, just let it sink in and something will come into your life that will remind you of this uh, when you're ready for it to sink in on, d- on a deeper level. But there are different levels of consciousness. And when you raise your level of consciousness, when you raise your ability to your capacity to receive love and to be in love and to know that the love, the kingdom of God is within you is what Christ says. When, when you allow him to transform you through death, through this inner work, you don't, there aren't shortcuts. You don't, I, I don't get it from working hard to convince myself of a lie. And that's what I was doing. I was spending, not completely doing, obviously you guys know I'm seeking truth and seeking freedom and seeking to mend broken hearts, to truly mend them. And, um, but, um, if I don't yield and surrender to this higher truth, that's painful to accept. I'll tell you, I'll show you why it's painful to accept why I was crying my eyes out. (sighs) If I don't do that, then I have all these blocks to love and I'm not going to be in that frequency to receive what's already right here. It's, it's right here. It's not out there. It's right here. It's always and forever. It's, all, it's already here. It's here through, through the, the way and the way is love and the way, like the path is love. It's the highest love and what you get is love. And what you let go of is not love. I was thinking on the way up here, just pray, pray. You can pray and ask divine love to make you like gold and like silver and burn away what's dross, what is, what's not of love. Even if it's painful, help me to have courage to endure whatever pain is necessary. Face the necessary pain. Otherwise... Like, if I'm addicted to drugs and stuff, I become a slave to that. If I'm addicted to, to um, sex or passions or, um, you know, serial relationships or pleasing even um, my kids and trying to make them happy all the time, then um, it's this endless spiral or trying to please some person in my life that's never pleased. Um, it's... It, I make myself a puppet and a slave and I block myself from love. And you know, I love Rumi, the mystic Sufi poet. And he says, do not seek for love. Instead, seek and understand and remove all the barriers between yourself and love. And there's a, po- there's a poem, a prayer from the 1500s from St. Ignatius that I, I found again when I was moving. I had it laminated. That I have a laminator. <laughs> But it was like um, part of the poem is let me not run from the love which you offer. And so I know in my head that God, divine love, I won't necessarily say God because people just, again, like there's a bush and you just write it off. You say God and it's just there's all this distorted crap in there with your idea of God. And God is the fullness of love. Like divine love is the mother, father, creator. I'm talking Russian. It's uh, it's some not a Cherokee word. Um, it's a word in some Native American language. I forgot. But it means you're in the mind womb of God, the fullness of the imagination of the love, creative space of God. This artwork, your, this amazing artwork. And C.S. Lewis says, like, you know, sometimes we wish we were just like a really quick sketch, that God would quit sketching on us. But you're this beautiful, masterful painting. You're, you're, you're an expression of love. You are a soul in a human body. 
So let's get to let's get to this real quick. Is um what I saw was that I was wondering why I was making excuses for scraps that someone I love was um, giving to me. And it's a repetition of childhood. That's why is my mom showed me, um, you know, to just accept scraps and that's all we get and that's all there is and not to stand up for herself because she was in distorted feminine and my father was in distorted masculine. And you can look up what distorted masculine is but it's, it's just an inner, it's an energy. It's a way of being. It's not who you really are. It's not who I really am. So I'm not bound by that. I'm not bound by my mom's pattern and um, enslavement to that energy. I, I can know more and then do more. And then as I do more, as I align with truth right now, then the truth will set you free. The truth is setting me free right now because I'm letting myself actually know it and crying is letting go of this old way of being and this old way of being when I was accepting the scraps and making excuses for someone giving me scraps I didn't realize my it was me living in my egotism I kept going oh that person keeps living in this shallow place and judging and they're living in their egotism but I was living in my egotism because my egotism was like was telling me you're not enough you are not enough in your soul self you're not enough for love ah no wonder this quote from Jane Eyre was coming coming to me yesterday it was saying she says something like enough enough love you think there's enough love the stuff of love and you'd have to see it in the movie um but this guy proposed to her and he just proposed to her because in his, in his check boxes of a book of she would be a good fit for him. And there wasn't, there wasn't this deep love, you know, she loved him like a brother, but it wasn't, it, uh, it was like a computer program for him and she stood up for herself and I'm glad she did. But anyway, is I was, I, I was following my egotism, which was saying, I have to, this is, this is the pattern, the broken pattern, okay? But we can understand the broken pattern to understand the true. And I was looking at the face of Christ. He shows me the true. For me, divine love shows me the true so that I can let go of the false. No one showed you how to unfold your love. I don't know why nobody told me. They bought and sold you. Anyway, I know I'm getting that a little off, but it's fine. Um, go to, okay, so I, I was, my egotism was saying, there's the guy again. This is like a loop. This is like the karmic loop in our life. This is so rad. If you don't get off this wheel, then it will be like this guy that keeps circling around like the Truman Show, you know? That was the, this is the, third time that I've seen him he'll just keep going around in a circle and maybe you get the the thrill of going down but you don't get off this karmic wheel and get to the real love so I was I was okay I was um, using I was in my own egotism thinking this old pattern that I knew from childhood so I'm not going to beat myself up anymore I forgave myself this morning while I'm still forgiving myself I heard a priest the other day a bishop say you know don't be too quick to forgive and I was so surprised but in context he was saying you know how people just rush and go oh I forgive you you know and it's really just making excuses for the person and glossing over this deep hurt that you felt from their betrayal and their the the wrong of their actions the it's not okay what they chose to do it's not okay it's not about making excuses it's not about going oh I'm a Christian so I forgive you you know it's like no like it's 
Because there's still the verses that say you reap what you sow. What you put out comes back to you. So to act like what this person did was nothing is, is a lie. But to keep investing in the story of, oh, woe is me. I'm never worth being loved. That's com- perpetuating a story that you are allowed to let go of. And so there's two things in that. And I'd like to do a video if I don't have it in this. It came to me the other day that someone can have a hard heart and be like, yeah, I don't care what people say about me. And they look like a strong person. But the strong person is the one that knows your real worth. And this is what we're talking about today. And knows you are always worth loving. And does everything to align with truth and seek truth and live in that truth and set themselves free to love fully. And when you have this open heart full of love, then you get to an ascended place where you don't care what people say because you've already had to face everything and, and, and muster up every last courage you could possibly have and ask divine love to like give you the rest and admit when you don't have enough you don't have it I don't have the courage to go to this place today so help me go there because I know I want to be free (laughs) this is what makes you not care what people say about you this is what makes you strong this is what gives you a warm innocent loving heart that loves everybody and sees their soul but will not sell yourself out for anything anymore. God help us. It's different than having a closed off hard heart. It doesn't feel anymore. That repeats the pain of your own childhood, that walks on people, that ghosts them, that just leaves them on the ground and goes after whatever pleasures you think are gonna fill you up. I don't care, I'm not gonna judge because that's what I was doing. So this is what I was doing in my, own, in my own self by believing this lie. It's following my egotism to believe this lie that I'm not worth the love. It's just 27, 27. That, um, that my dad taught me uh, in, in his own subconscious or his own not willingness to do his own shadow work. That's on him. I choose to do mine and I don't have to stay stuck and hang around and wait for my dad to do his shadow work now that I'm older. I don't. And I don't have to wait for my mom to do her shadow work, her inner work, and heal this stuff and align with truth. For me to be aligned with truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And Christ said, those who follow me, Christ was a master at love, at love. I don't care what else you believe about him. He knew how to love fully. And so I follow him and he always takes me to a higher love always always and so I was following this idea of my father's that says you please me you make me happy and I was finding I saw these these men who um have this eye for perfection and there's nothing wrong with having an eye for perfection but it's like Making excuses is like, oh, unless this person is perfect, I'm not going to love her because there's something missing in her. But that's something missing in them. That's them in their own egotism. You know, they follow all these perfect looking people because they believe and I believed in myself that I had to be perfect in order to earn love. Excuse me. I don't have to be perfect to earn love. I am already loved. I am loved. And, but I was perpetuating this lie that I wasn't enough because I kept following my dad's pattern, which is a lower pattern instead of this higher pattern, is he, he who does not despise, hate, let go of his mother and father, brother, sister, whatever, for my sake is not worthy of my calling. He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of my calling. This, these are the words of Christ. And he's not saying this because he's a, a, a narcissist and he needs your 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 adulation and your admiration or whatever he's saying this because this is what frees you when you see that this is I have discernment now that this is the plastic pearl and I no longer have resonance with the plastic pearl so what I'm saying is my dad would say unconsciously 
that you have to keep pleasing me and making me feel good about my empty self because he was building his worth on his egotism. This is what distorted masculine does on money and fame and how many people like me and how popular I can be and how much I can show off to my friends and how if they reject someone and say, oh, she's not worth loving or trends say she's not worth then I'm not going to go to her because, you know, I don't want them to look down on them because I have to get my worth from all these external sources. Then I am a slave to that. And you never know your inner worth. You never know your real soul self. You never know the real truth. And so what I was doing was I was perpetuating that in my own self by agreeing that, oh, I have to keep trying to get my validation from this person or these people or this society or this job or going in this job just because I'm my, my, my doctorate in psychology, I have to do it a certain way. I don't. I don't. I have my doctorate and I was called to that and I love being with my clients and I, they know the excellent work that I do with them and it's amazing to, to have the privilege of working with them to help them align with these truths and let go of things and walk alongside them like the spirit of God, like the spirit of love, the Holy Spirit will walk along. That's the word for it. It's the breath, but it walks alongside us in this path. So we're not alone. So I can do this because I'm not alone. I'm not alone. But what I was doing was I was trying to please my dad's idea of, and, and therefore all these other people's idea of um, what will keep trying to make them happy. And that's a black hole. And I just kept thinking, if I keep giving, then they'll stop giving me scraps. And then the love that I know they feel for me inside, because I know I felt it from my parents too, they'll finally show that. But it's like, they can't show that until they do their inner work and align with truth and let go of everything that is hindering them 100% fully into that, fully committed to that, until they're fully committed to themselves. They can't show up for me in that capacity. And I don't need them to. I don't care anymore because I'm not a child. As soon as I let go of trying to get the lack, the scraps from them, believing in this lack mentality, I've talked about it a lot, but this is a new layer I'm getting to. As soon as I let go of that um, and stop trying to please my dad, like my mom was trying to please my my dad, um, then I see that I was perpetuating this idea of you're not enough. Because I was buying into his idea of you're not enough. And that's just an excuse for his own fear of intimacy. And it was an excuse for my fear of intimacy. I felt like if I let go of doing that, then I would lose this person I love. And I would lose my mother and my father. And I would lose everything. I would lose my kids, my job, everything. But now it's like, it doesn't matter what I lose. It doesn't matter. I align myself with love. I take the fool's journey. I jump off. I step on to that invisible bridge. Like in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And if I fall, I fall. But guess what? I'm not going to fall. I'm going to find out that it's love. I already know that it's love. So learn how to respect yourself. How to know what real faith is. How to give yourself everything by giving everything to the divine love. I wish you love.